Yo guys, welcome back to a brand new video and another episode of my F1 2019 career mode here today for round number 9 of the season for the Austrian Grand Prix at the Red Bull Ring. If you guys missed the last episode yesterday, round 8 for the French Grand Prix, then go watch the video guys by clicking the link in the top right hand corner of the screen and go watch that video guys before we jump into any spoilers. But for this weekend, we are here at Austria and as you can see on the screen, we have no rain expected this weekend which is good news for us. And also, for the first time in a little while, we actually have some upgrades onto the car. So that's going to hopefully improve our performance. We've got one for the DRS on the aerodynamics and one for the tire wear on the uh, chassis. And that actual tire wear one is actually an ultimate upgrade. So a big, big improvement on the car there. And those two upgrades together are going to be a big, big change to the, uh, the landscape here. As we actually overtake Red Bull and Williams for the first time ever in this career mode are the fastest team in this entire grid, which is fantastic to see. And we are comfortably quickest and we have more upgrades on the way in the next race anyway. So the car is going to get even quicker. But the big news is this weekend, Pierre Gasly has been fired and replaced with Antonio Giovinazzi with Gasly moving the other way, going back to Alfa Romeo. So... Overall, an interesting team choice, actually. And again, Galaxy has been underperforming, but I do think he's been very unlucky. Having said that, the team thought he wasn't good enough, and he's been fired and replaced by the Italians. So we've got a new teammate once again. And uh, yeah, we're going to have to get to grips with it and see what Giovinazzi's pace is like as we get the practice here at Austria. And straight away, the car felt pretty good. Uh, we struggled to get the qualifying performance test program done. But other than that, the car was working well. We are using 110% AI once again this weekend. And uh, generally speaking, I'm happy with the balance, but we do seem to be lacking a little bit of pace surprisingly even though the car is the quickest one on the grid we are lacking a bit of overall pace i'm also running with a very worn energy store ng uk and also control electronics especially the ng uk and the energy store they're both above 55 percent and that means we're going to have a slightly handicapped ers deployment this weekend but um, i have to kind of drag it out because we've only got two of these components all season long and i'll try and get the new ones on for the next race in silverstone and hopefully put on a couple of upgrades as well just to make sure we can make it to, to the end of the season really with these components because I don't really want to take an engine penalty and I want to try and keep it realistic as always. But overall, you see Ricardo there in the Alfa Romeo and he's going to be joined by Pierre Gasly, of course, as his new teammate in that team. And uh, there he is. Matter of fact, there is Gasly's new Alfa Romeo with the number 10. And curious to see how he gets on really with his new team and will he have some better form, maybe do better, get some more results. You never know. We'll have to wait and see how that one pans out. But uh, we're going to jump into qualifying here, more specifically into Q1. And we're going to see how the session gets underway. As there is Antonio Giovinazzi getting ready for his first session in the Williams car as my new teammate. And overall, I'm looking forward to seeing what he has to offer and hopefully bring a few more points to the team as we fight for the Constructors' Championship. But guys, with that being said, let's jump into it here for Q1. And let's see how we get on. That's a nice sunny sky christens if you will the red bull ring as we get underway in this first part of qualifying and we are going to go for one run in this session hopefully it will be enough to get us through into q2 and you'll see here on my lap so far so good two tenths down on Charles Leclerc through the, through the second sector and I was losing most of my time through that second sector to be honest um, the final sector I was using a little bit as well but mainly sector two was the one where I was struggling so um, the Williams still has kind of some underlying understeer which I can't seem to get rid of I think it's just the nature of it being the worst car on the grid on the default game and it's kind of hard to get rid of that but as, as we cross the line we go P7 four tenths off the top and uh, that lap will be good enough to get us through into Q2 with a 1 minute 2.4 so we're actually pushing the 1 minute laps here around Austria which is absolutely insane Joe Vinanzi there P4 out qualifying me straight away in the first session there in Q1 as we now move into Q2 and uh, the target is a 102.4 that's what we did in Q1 I want to try and beat that in this session and in Q2 we didn't get off to the best start you know we went fastest through sector one but then we encountered traffic here in the Formula Toro Rosso I believe it's Danny Kafia and um, he had this entire straight to get out of my way but he decided to just stay there and got out of the way of course in the worst possible place and that is right on the apex of the corner and that's a consequence made me miss the apex run a bit wide get a bit of oversteer on the exit and overall make it a bit of a scruffy end to the lap and uh, we dropped about half a second with uh, Kafia out there four tenths maybe as we cross the line I do it one minute 2.9 so Overall, not the best, about half a second off my lap in Q1, so not where we want to be as Verstappen's currently quickest in the red ball. But now we're going to go for another lap here, and with two minutes to go, it's all or nothing on this lap. We're currently 15th and last, so we have to try and step up and find something on this lap. So here we go, up towards turn, turn one. You want to look for the 100 meter board break just after that fourth gear, really throw it in there. We could have taken a bit more inside curve, but overall, a decent first corner. Again, the traction down quite nicely on the exit as we now go up towards turns two and three, looking for the 100 meter board, possibly the 50 once again as you break down towards first gear for this little hairpin quickly. And it's important to get on the power here to really try and maximize the speed out of here, open up the DRS, and so far, we're a tenth up. So, so far, so good as we now encounter the area where we've got 
held up last time by Kofiat, breaking as a shadow appears on the track between the 150 meter board down to third gear, quickly back on the power on the exit and a uh, much better second two as we now throw the car into this next series of left-handers, trying to hug the inside line, quickly get the power on the car wide on the exit and then back into the apex for another left-hander, briefly going down to fourth gear to get some rotation as we're now three tenths down and we've lost a bit of time to Perez who's currently setting the pace in the racing point. One more second to go though, here we go, throwing the car into turn number nine and now down towards turn ten again, just really committing to these corners, getting on the power nice and early as we run up to the line and we are going to prove by four tenths of a second and it's only good enough for P10 with a 1 minute 2.5 that's actually slower than our Q1 lap surprisingly but um, personally that lap felt really really good and I was really really happy with it there wasn't much more time on the table to be honest so overall it is actually a Q2 elimination I thought we would have might got through but overall it wasn't enough the lap in Q1 would have got us through and uh, that would have done the job in P10 but overall I'm not too disappointed because the one stop around here is the better strategy anyway like the last race in Port Ricard so overall P11 I'll take that Giovinazzi out qualifies us in his first race for the Williams team so fair play and GG's to him as Perez sets the pace in Q2 but that is it for qualifying here today at the Red Bull ring and we start from P11 but we're now going to move into the race here hopefully we can turn it around as we get ready for round nine of the season for the Austrian Grand Prix. Your qualifying pace didn't put you at the front of the grid. Will this be a problem tomorrow? What do you think your new teammate has to offer? Appreciate your time. What a beautiful backdrop to a motor race. We're here in the Styrian Mountains, of course, and they've watched over some cracking races throughout the history of this Grand Prix. Controversy, of course, think back to 2002, but also great joy. Do you remember Nicky Lauda's historic home victory in 1984? The Spielberg circuit then is situated 700 meters above sea level, with just 10 corners making up one of the shortest laps of the season. One time around here is a distance of 2.6 miles, with the best overtaking chances into Turn 1 or the tight uphill Turn 3. Off the back of a fantastic qualifying session, it's time to see how our starting grid looks for today's race. Sebastian Vettel has a clear track ahead of him today. He starts in pole position with Charles Leclerc alongside. Looking at the rest of today's grid, we have Bottas, Hamilton, George Russell and Perez, Ricardo, Giovinazzi, Martinez and Kevin Magnussen, Sainz, Albon, Max Verstappen and Norris. Raikkonen, Hulkenberg, Pierre Gasly, they've taken a grid penalty. And Roman Grosjean, Stroll, and Daniel Kvyat completes the grid. Now it's almost time to lights out, so let's go down to the track. Right, so here we are then on the grid for the Austrian Grand Prix, starting from P9 actually, quite a surprise as a couple of cars get grid penalties, including Max Verstappen, who's starting from behind. And overall, we're going to start inside the top 10 on fresh rubber, and I'm going to opt to go for the medium tyres and go for the inverted strategy, so medium softs instead of soft mediums, and hopefully have that advantage in the second half of the race where we can really push on the soft compound tyre and avoid tyre overheating. In terms of fuel, we're running the lowest possible, 36.4, which is just over the 36 laps of the race, actually has so quite light relative to what I've been using recently and no chances of rain as well so overall the target is simple we've got to try and stay in the race on the medium tyres in this first phase and then hopefully it will kind of come to us later on and it will suit us much better later on, the, later on in the race with both the uh, used medium tyres and also the soft tyres at the end which will hopefully make a big big difference but overall guys hopefully we can score a podium maybe even win the race I think that's, there's an outside possibility we could pull that off if the strategy works out but uh, for me the target this race is a podium so let's jump into it and let's see how we get on here here for round nine of the season for the Austrian Grand Prix. Here we go then, let's try and get a good start then as we get ready for the five red lights. And away we go and it's a good launch. Good initial gets away, we struggle to get some rear traction though so we're going to go I think 3-1 into turn one here with Magnussen and Sainz. I'm on the middle, I've got to try and stick to my line and we managed to just get away with it and hold on to ninth place. Really good defensive driving there as we hold on and uh, we've got both Ferraris already hitting the front. Giovinazzi in front of us, my own teammate, I'm going to just stack up behind him here and uh, just follow him for now, yellow flag behind I believe, this is going slow really, for another reason, as the Ferraris hit the front they start to push away, Mercedes 3-4, there could be a bit of a cork in the bottom of the Mercedes cars because 
they're not that quick anymore. You know, they've, they've qualified that high because of the Q3 glitch. So um, they'll probably drop through the field naturally as the race progresses. But look at this, Magnussen here having a look at me into turn five. I didn't expect that. And he's gone for it and made it work straight away. Fair play. And we've got Verstappen behind us now. So got to be careful. Caught mapping there, but struggling for some grip in sector two. I'm not very quick for sector two as it is. If you combine the medium tires with that, we are going to struggle, but Magnussen there showing the, the speed of the racing point on the opening lap as he just breezes up to the back of me and passes me. We definitely need to upgrade the uh, straight line speed of this car with the engine. And here comes Verstappen now. We're accumulating some wear on the MG UK. To manage this, we'll need to lower our ERS deployment mode. Verstappen trying to go down the inside, pulled it off, but we've got the switchback on him. But now Signs in the McLaren is getting the slipstream here and he's looking for the move. I've got to defend the inside again. There's contact, so he just catches my front left and we're, we're locked on, which is not what you want. Losing a handful of time at the minute with this, really not ideal for us. Signs coming at me again here, he's got so much straight on speed, what is going on? I'm in overtake mode, he's just flying, he's missing an end plate though, so let's try and get in front of him. There we go, hopefully Signs will cost people behind a bit of time in sector 2 with that damage front wing. I think that's from hitting me in turn 3, I'm not sure what he was doing though, he was kind of going to my left hand side, I had the racing line, so... We're going to continue on here. Hopefully we can pull away though. But this medium tyre is struggling to work early on. And Sainz is on me again here in the McLaren. He's really flying at the minute. And we are really struggling for straight line speed in this race, it seems. As we hold the inside line for turn nine, we avoid the issues and everyone's saying purple laps. As we go on to lap three now, really explosive start to the race. Race officials have enabled DRS. DRS is now available. If I can just have a good turn one, which I do, get a nice clean exit. Let's try and pull away from signs here. He has got DRS, so it's going to be quite tricky to keep him behind. But looks like we've done enough. There we go. In front of us, we've got Giovinazzi and Magnussen battling away as well. Hopefully we can get some DRS off those guys. That would help me out. The energy store is getting warm, reducing our overall capacity. The more charge you hold, the faster that capacity will drop. Yeah, it is the last race with these components, so we've just got to put up with it for one more race. Here comes Signs, he's gaining on me, but it won't be enough into the break zone. So we'll stay in front for now. He's hanging in there quite nicely to say he's got wing damage, he's doing a good job. But uh, we're comfortably hanging on now. If we go to the engine tab, you'll see Energy Store and Energy UK both on 57%. Those are the two components that we need to work on for the rest of the season, because I'm going to probably put new components on for the next race in Silverstone, but that's only going to be round 10, so we've still got 11 races to go, so we've got to try and improve on our reliability there, because if we can just improve those two components, then uh, we should be able to get the engine to the end of the season and not have to take any penalties at any point. But uh, anyway, back to the racing. Signs here is still coming after me here, and he's got a good pace. He's still attacking me into turn nine, but not quite close enough. Good thing he's got wing damage, because otherwise he'd be all over the back of me. And he kind of is anyway, but let's get ahead down and try and open up the gap a bit, because... Uh, we're struggling here. I need to try and find more pace. Some information on Gasly. They have an issue with their car. They're going to be slow. Well, there you go. That's ironic. Gasly's behind us in the Alpha trying to recover, but he's got issues with his new car already. I've got to be honest. This medium tire is not working. I'm struggling for pace. Albon's challenging me around the outside of turn 9 and 10, which is not a usual overtaking place, but we've got no pace. I'm really just not setting any kind of decent lap times here. I'm down a straight line speed, I definitely need new engine components and also engine upgrades, that's for certain. But um, yeah, we just don't have the pace. I really thought by lap 7 now the medium tire would be starting to work, but we're really struggling and not kind of showing any sort of pace at the minute to really challenge. So uh, a little bit concerning to be honest. I, don't, I might be giving myself a bit too much work in the final stint to pull back on the soft tire, which, you know, it might not happen. I, I haven't really had great pace this weekend. I have been struggling a little bit and the pace hasn't quite been there. So I'm not entirely surprised, but... Yeah, I'd expect a bit more from the best car on the grid, to be honest. Okay, now I'm starting to improve the pace a little bit. One minute, 6.4. Still a long way off, though, where I need to be. And the car doesn't feel that great, to be honest. And Albon is putting the pressure on here. So I've got to keep turning the engine up a little bit just to stay in front. Here he comes again. He might be close enough. And he was, but he didn't quite commit to the move. i just got to keep pushing. I'm really on the limit of my pace here. I don't have much more in the tank. Albon's really pushing me. Check your MFD for a new strategy option. As we match our personal best, give it an alternate strategy. Let's see what the team says. Understood. Copy that. We'll just say yes for that to that for now. As here comes Albon, he's going to go around the outside. I'm going to try and match him on the brakes. 
Down the inside of turn three. And we'll get the position back. A little bit of oversteer there. Rear end not working. But we are going to get DRS, which is going to help us out. We are slowly catching the cars in front. There's a bit of a train in front. So we're slowly making progress towards it. Once I can get involved in that, that will really help me out. But uh, this medium tire is not working one bit. It really isn't. That soft tire seems to be really consistent. Not quite sure why that was a track extension, but we move anyway. We'll, we'll push on. We got penalised in the last race. Hopefully it doesn't happen again, but quite mystified as to why that was a track extension, to be honest. Looks like Verstappen is now pressuring Albon behind, and uh, as, a, as a consequence, they're both getting closer to me again. My pace is consistent now. I can run in the mid 106s, which is good. And uh, we are definitely catching the cars in front, but I need more pace in this. I've got to try and do more. Here comes Albon, though. He's flying this time. He's absolutely got the run on me here. We're not going to be able to run in this engine mode much longer. We're about a lap over target. Drop down to mix too soon. We get DRS so we can now push on. Hopefully we can drop him. I just need to pull out of the one second window and I might be okay. Wow, it's really kicking off in front of us. Personal best is Russell Pitts. There's multiple three wide situations in front. So uh, this is good news for us. We're starting to catch now. And these tires are still working. Now I'm starting to notice a bit of a difference here. We've dropped Albon. I think we're almost a second clear, almost. But uh, yeah, this is good news. We're now starting to really come into the race. Took a bit longer than I would have liked, but we know at least we're here now, which is good. Uh, let's try and get within the DRS of the cars in front to try and make progress as Verstappen makes a move on Albon behind us for P10. Okay, Verstappen pits in the other Red Bull. So it seems like they're both going one stop on the hard tyres. This will also be an undercut from Verstappen on us, so we've got to be careful. But we've got a long way to go on these tyres if we want to go into the soft. So either way, we're making progress. Different Nancy's now at the front of this train, which is good to see. But uh, it might not be for much longer as he's getting under pressure now from other cars. We're finally within range. We've got ourselves within one second of Bottas. So there we go. Now let's try and get some DRS, hopefully, on the next one. Right, let's see who pits. Looks like we've got uh, Giovinazzi, the Alpha, and Hamilton in the pit lane. Bottas stays out. I'm right at the back of him. Antonio is in the pits. Antonio in the pits. Almost lost an end play. I got so close to the rear of Bottas. But uh, here we go. We're going to try and make a move on him now. Exact same scenario as Paul Ricard, where Bottas stayed out one more lap and... Uh, We've made the move on him, so here we go, DRS. Let's wait until we can get the DRS in the next detection point. We'll try and go around the outside. Bottas giving me a little room. Want to go around the outside here, the long way around. There we go, and we'll get DRS for the next one. See you later, oh, job done. Up to third place. Right, the work isn't done there. We've got to try and push now and have good pace in clean air. Like the last race in Paul Ricard, these laps were important. We've got to get to lap 20 at least, possibly 22 and uh, have good race pace, so let's get head down and uh, push on. All the remaining soft tyre runners pit in now, so we're going to inherit a first place. Leclerc to medium tyres, so he's one-stopping and doing the original strategy. We're doing the reverse, but Leclerc's going to be the closest car to us on track, so the target really is to keep Leclerc behind us, or Russell, whoever it may be, behind us before we pit. Leclerc setting the pace, 105.2, and he's catching me about a second a lap. So he'll be on the back of me soon. Hopefully, though, by lap 22, he hasn't overtaken me. I don't want to lose time battling to Leclerc. I've turned the engine up on this lap. I'm wrong for a strong lap here. I'm trying to keep Leclerc behind, and I want to pick up lap 22, so I'm picking up the pace a little bit. The car, to be honest, now feels pretty good. Now the fuel's burnt off a bit. This is more like the car I expected to have about 12 laps ago, to be honest. But we've struggled to have it here today. In this lap, in this lap, push now. We're going to pit in this lap, of course, so we've done a good job. We've kept Leclerc behind, so overall very happy with that one. A good stint, but uh, we're now going to pit this lap for soft tyres. Pit now, pit now. Yep, we're going to box in. I've uh, selected a bit less front wing, even though it's going to give me some more understeer, which is not what I want. I'm lacking straight line speed, so I want that performance on the straight. So we're going to reduce the front wing a bit. We're going to pit in for the soft tyres. Get it all slowed down, and there we go. That's a good pit entry. And overall, we started off the stint quite poorly, but we ended it very strongly. So we might have put ourselves into play here. Not for a podium, but I think we put ourselves into the points maybe with the strategy. Here we go. Go, go, go. So there we go. P10 currently. Here comes Bottas. That was our last stop. No more scheduled pit stops. Looks like it's going to be close to Albon here in the Torosso. He might just get ahead of us for P11. Yes, he is. But we'll get DRS. Hopefully we can... 
turn him over quickly into the break zone. Now on the inside, on the fresh soft tyres. There we go, and we get DRS, job done. Right then, so definitely we're going to score points. There's a lot of cars up the road which are battling, so that's good news for us. I reckon maybe a top five. That's got to be the target. Hopefully my soft tyres hold on like that. They, they did for the AI in the first in. If that's the case, then I fancy our chances. Verstappen's pulled off a massive undercut in the Red Bull on the hard tyres and has overtaken a bunch of cars, so that's why we've dropped outside the points now, but let's get after Bottas and also set a purple up in the protest. All right, let's try and get past Valtteri here. Giovinazzi and Hamilton battling in front as well. At the final corner, purple middle sector, is it enough? 150, only just. I know this happened at a 150 as well. Around the outside of Bottas at turn one, and we're going to get the momentum here. No DRS on Hamilton, but we've got the momentum. I might be able to pass both of these guys possibly out the next corner if, I'm, if I time it right. Hamilton, Giovinazzi side by side. We're going to get the switch back, but Gio just holds me up there on the exit, and I can't quite get the traction down. I have to wait. We are going to get the sip stream though. We're going to go to the outside of the pair of them. I'm going to try and look around the outside of Lewis, but no way through. Up to ninth place though, good progress. Let's keep it going. Let's see if we can get past the Mercedes driver here. Let's just be patient and we'll get him on the pit straight probably. I'm going to try and save some ERS while I'm behind him. Picking up some dirty, I can definitely notice it. But here we go, let's try and get past. And then we've got another two cars in front. I believe Verstappen and Ricardo battling, so a few more positions up for grabs here. Here we go, at the final corner. DRS on Lewis, let's get this one done. We pretty much burned off our excess fuel. We'll be back on target soon. Don't wait too long to turn the engine down. Job done around the outside. Very easy overtake on Hamilton there. And uh, we take eighth place, we've got Verstappen and Ricardo. Verstappen actually on medium tyres, so you could be two stopping maybe. Which would potentially ruin our attempt of a faster lap. Well, the two sets up in the first sector, so let's keep pushing here. Let's try and secure even an even faster lap on this lap and hopefully score that point. But uh, we are getting on these two. There we go, then DRS on these two. They're really pushing. Pace is good. This should be a quicker lap. 104.5, that's more like it. Let's see if we go into turn one. These two are side by side. Let's try and pick up the pieces. There's contact. We're going to just avoid contact with Ricardo. Verstappen has DRS, but it's going to mean nothing as we get the run on him here. We're going to try and pass him around the outside on the brakes. Verstappen's late, but we're going to go all the way around the outside and pick up the position. And there we go, P6. What a stint so far, really picking up the overtakes. We've got Magnussen here battling with a Ferrari, so let's try and catch this guy up as well. Oh, yellow flag. Is that in front or behind? Sebastian Vettel out of the race in the Ferrari. So that's another position for free. Up to P5 we go. Verstappen's gaining on me here. But not quite enough. Will Verstappen be able to keep up or will he have to pit in? Surely he have to pit. He was the first car to pit pretty much. It'll be a massive stem in mediums if he does go all the way. Here he comes. He's got a lot of straight line speed in that Red Bull. We are definitely down on power now. We need to improve the engine. That's starting to become a bit of a priority now. I can really notice it. As uh, Verstappen's still trying here, he's going to go around the outside. I can't really do much about it. Ricardo's the cup approaching as well. We're going to hold the inside. We'll get DRS. And there we go. Job done. Textbook defending. Let's try and nab fourth place off of Magnussen here. Hopefully we can catch him up and uh, put some distance between myself and Verstappen. Even Perez and Russell aren't that far away for P2, just up the road. Just hoping these soft tires can hold on, really. Wow, Verstappen's got a lot of straight on speed here. He's completely caught me off guard. Look at the power of the Red Bull as he goes clean around the outside of turn nine. Trying to go around the outside of the final corner, but there's no way through there, Sunshine. But he's got a lot of straight on speed here as um, the soft tires are starting to fade a bit for me now. I don't seem to have the same endurance as the AI's soft tires, so we are struggling to pick up a second corner cut there. So I'm on my final warning now with five laps to go. This could get a little bit close, to be honest. So here comes Verstappen again. But he's not as close this time, so we should be okay. The uh, tyres feel good. I'm starting to give it everything now. I need to push flat out. I want to try and catch Magnussen. Or at least get within his DRS and take Verstappen off the back of me. Because he's putting too much pressure on. And I can't quite hang on. I haven't got enough fuel ERS to really defend with. So I'm using whatever I've got left to push. And try and get after Magnussen instead. Bit of a change of tactic. 
because I'm not going to catch him in standard engine mode as it is. And it seems to be working. 1.4 behind. We're getting very close now. I'm on the limit. I've got no fuel ERS to play with. Literally, I've got nothing left. So, this is all I've got. If Verstappen gets to run here, I can't defend and he is going to get the run, so I've got to defend. I was waiting for him to turn the engine up and there he goes. Around the outside, we'll defend that. Looks like it's going to be a battle to hold on. Looks like it's going to be a battle to hold on to P5 rather than get P4. It's a shame because George Russell's just up the road as well for a podium, but we're just not going to have enough, unfortunately. And the tyres are starting to go, so we've got to defend from Max, unfortunately, for us. Here he comes. He's looking for the move again. Around the outside of turn nine, and we're going to be on the inside line. I've got to be careful with track extending. Max gives me a squeeze, there's contact, we save it. But uh, that's that done then. Verstappen the squeeze me into the apex, fair enough. Down to P6. At least we've got DRS, but I think we're not going to get back past, unfortunately. Here we go then, last lap of the race, and it's going to be Charlotte Clos who's going to win the race here today for Ferrari. But overall, P6, not the best one. We have struggled this weekend, I can't lie. The car's not been that good. And we're starting, it's becoming apparent now we are lacking engine power and we need to get those upgrades on. So, uh, yeah, hopefully we can improve that soon enough as the Leclerc crosses the line. And only P6 today, but we are going to pick up the extra point for the last lap of the race as this happened. Our championship rival is going to finish one place ahead of us in P5. But overall, a decent race and a couple of points. Overall, the best we could have done here today. That's the end of the race. We'll see you in part four, mate. That's a fantastic performance from Ferrari. It hardly looked in doubt. Anthony Davidson, how do you think they were able to set themselves apart today? Well, I know it's a bit of a boring answer, but the truth is they simply had the best speed package on the day, and a driver who knows how to take advantage of that. It doesn't matter how much time you spend poring over the stats and planning strategies if you can't keep the pace, and our winner today showed they could do both. Here come our winners now. A thrilling race and a tremendous effort by Ferrari. Their history is well known, so it's no surprise to fans the world over to see them come out on top once again. Right, so looking at the final race results, Charles Leclerc wins for Ferrari here today. A rare win for the Ferrari team. And overall, it was quite comfortable to be on a 6.1 clear of Sergio Perez in the racing point. And then we've got George Russell, who was actually in third in the end and got the last step on the podium. And again, quite a rare one for him beating Verstappen, which doesn't happen too often. Kevin Magnussen P4, Max Verstappen P5, and then we finish in sixth place, scoring the extra point for the first half of the race. So overall... Not too bad, nine points for us, only one less than Verstappen. That's good damage limitation for the championship. Daniel Ricciardo, P7 in the Alfa Romeo. Antonio Giovinazzi scores points in his debut for Williams, which is quite rare and good news for us in the Constructors' Championship. Eighth place for him and four points, beating both Mercedes at the end with Hamilton and Bottas scoring the final points here today. Then we've got Alexander Albon missing out on the points in the second Toro Rosso, along with Lando Norris, Lance Stroll, Pierre Gasly, Carlos Sainz, Danny Kvyat, Roman Grosjean, Nico Hulkenberg and Kimi Raikkonen with Sebastian Vettel, the only retirement of the Grand Prix here today. In terms of the standings, we are still at the top and 19 points clear going into my home race at Silverstone, which I absolutely fancy my chances out in that race ahead of Max Verstappen. And then we've got Perez now in third place, overtaking Sebastian Vettel today. So, uh, you know, overall, it's looking like a top two at the moment. Perez a little bit further away from Verstappen, about a race win behind. And, um, yeah, overall, in terms of the constructors, we're in third place. We've lost out to second to Racing Point as they scored big points here today, no pun intended. And uh, we're currently down to third place, but it's still a top four fight between Ferrari, Williams, Racing Point and Red Bull. But overall, guys, that is it for the race here today. And we're now going to move into the laptop because we need some upgrades and we need them now. So, uh, yeah, overall, we're going to see what we can purchase. It might not be performance related because the engine side does worry me in terms of the durability. But also, we need engine performance. So I'm going to try and weigh up and see what the best options are moving forward. You were cutting your way through the field during the race. You have a new teammate. How are you two getting along? Appreciate your time. Okay, so here we are then on the laptop and we have 2,200 points to spend. We currently have a ultimate 
ERS upgrade on the way for the next race, sorry, the, the, in two races time at Germany. So hopefully that will arrive for the ERS. But until then, we can't unfortunately upgrade the engine just yet as we need to um, unlock this upgrade here for engine power. And these are the ones we need to really improve. So until this ERS one arrives, we can't improve. However, what I do need to work on is reliability. And, you know, there's a couple of parts of the car which need some work. One of them being the energy store that needs some help because we're not going to make it to the end on these power units if we don't help it out. And also the MG UK as well. So we're going to put those two on. And what we're going to do is we're going to save the rest of the points we have and hopefully make a big upgrade in the next episode or possibly in Germany. I think Germany might be the one where we can hopefully buy engine upgrades if the one that we've got on the way doesn't fail. But guys, that is going to be it for this episode of Korea Mode here today. If you guys enjoyed this video, drop a like and also get subscribe if you are new for daily Formula 1 content and also turn on notifications to not miss any videos from me and also finally check out these two videos on your screen if you have missed them but other than that guys thank you for watching and I'll see you in my next one very soon but until then it's goodbye from me